Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 464. Nasdaq's up 249. S&Ps are up 52. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Oh, it's a quiet Wednesday as we're waiting on the Fed today. Yeah, so uh, the bottom line is that uh, what can we expect out of the Fed, right? <laughs> well, I think it's more of the same, you know, to yeah. be quite honest with you. Um, and, you know, we've been talking about how the volatility has been slowly dropping over the past few weeks and how we've been kind of looking for this to kind of stabilize a little bit. And I think we finally hit that flatline point now. If, I mean, if you look at the major currencies versus the dollar, um, like the the pound, the yen, um, they're besides having tighter ranges on a daily basis, they've really gone nowhere over the past two weeks. Um, they went from wedging to just complete consolidation. Um, now, this is the majors, you know, like the pound, the yes. Swiss, the, the euro. Um, but when you still remember, we, we've been talking about a lot of your lesser currencies like the Turkish lira and oh, the Mexican yeah. peso, you know, like I think that the bull is still there for the dollar, um, but it's starting to slow down. Um, I think that it's topping, you know, in a lot of those currencies. Uh, the peso, for instance, um, their coronavirus pit cases have gone up um, not in a good way over the past couple of weeks. But the market itself has consolidated in the peso for the past like month or so. So I think that we're pretty much at the extreme now with the with a lot of the uh, the lesser currency crosses. So your dollar strength, I think, is holding up because of that, you know. So um, and the dollar index, remember when we spoke last week, the dollar was still on a little bit of a bullish path and we were looking for it to kind of die out and start to hit the upper part or the lower part of a resistance zone. It did. And if you look at at like the dollar index chart and the euro in, um, versus the dollar or the pound versus the dollar, Canada, all the big ones, they're all starting to look like a reflection of the dollar index chart, either directly yeah. or indirectly, depending on the, on the you know, which side the dollar is on. And so this is what we've been looking for and talking about for weeks that, you know, the market has absorbed all this stuff. And remember, we talked about the interest rate component a couple weeks back about yes. how that's pretty static and frozen. So today we have a Fed day. What is the Fed going to do? I mean, you're not going to go even though negative interest rates are not negative interest rates. People say, like, the banks are going to lend you money. Well, no, it's because of the value of versus taxes, inflation, and what have you. We're already at zero. Where are they going to go? You know, right. so I think that all they can do is give more, you know, propping up saying that, you know, we're going to keep on to supporting the bond market, keep on doing these things until we get through this wave, you know, so... And I think that's really where we're at, kind of in limbo. Yeah, no, and I can see, you know, look, so these currencies, man, it's, it, currencies like to trend in a long period of time. So right. I guess the real question is, is that, you know, the dollar has been trending up for a dramatic amount of time. You know, mm -hmm. is this like a slight turn? You know, I mean, I guess we don't know at this particular point, but that's right. going to get intriguing because I was look, watching, you know, these not third world countries, but, you know, Brazil, mm -hmm. that start turning, meaning, you know, that it, currency got imploded. The RAND got right. imploded. Um, and, you know, they're starting to turn. And, you know, we'll see whether it's just a retracement or, in fact, uh, their perception would be uh, people would start saying, hey, man, I think, I think it's too overdone, right? I mean, you know. So, right. Yeah. And, right. Right. And I think that that's exactly what we've come to that point is that, I mean, uh, let's just say that the, the coronavirus curve doesn't go up or down over the next month or so. What difference does that have to do with the markets now? They've already had the shock value. We went through that two months ago. Yes. You know, um, and if you take coronavirus aside, let's just remove that from the equation. The dollar was, was a bull that was starting to struggle at the end of the year going into this year. So if we take the coronavirus part out, as we start to flatten the curve and come out, then by just going by that scenario, the dollar should retract, you know, but I think in the short run right now, since we still have a lot of unclarity, you know, and uncertainty rather, that that's what's holding the dollar up because it's still a flight to quality. You know, everyone is still looking for the U.S. dollar as support. Everyone's still looking to America for as a leader. You know, I mean, we have Europe that's starting to come out. You know, we're looking at the numbers from Sweden and Norway and how things are, how things are working over there in other parts of the world. And if these models are actually 
actually correct. And, and the real, as we get more testing, if these things start to really show the real validity of where we're at now. See, two months ago, it was too much ambiguity. Right. Now we have data. We have actual numbers to look at, you know, and it's actually starting to fall into place more and more and more. And if this trend continues, well, then our baseline should be where we're at now. We'll stabilize and we'll return to where we were before the coronavirus. You know, as far as currencies and interest rates and things, the equity markets, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Yeah. It's so intriguing, man, that you know, we're so lucky that the dollar is the reserve currency of the world because if any other yes. country ever used this much stimulus, we would, I mean, I could just picture us saying, what are they doing, man? I mean, they just, the printing, well, the digital presses are going. We don't even have printer presses anymore, folks. We do, but the, right. the reality is that the central bank just hits a button digitally, you know, uh, uh, bottom line, if Teddy owns the bank, you know, I'm the Fed, Tommy's the Fed, you hit a button and all of a sudden, you know, you get a uh, trillion dollars in, in your account that you can start lending out, you know what I mean? So it, right. it does right. get pretty wild watching this whole thing shake out. No doubt. Well, think about the value of the dollar. I mean, we're one of the world's food producers. Could you imagine if we were in the opposite relationship and our currency was slammed and commodities were low? I mean, you could have China basically buy up our food supply and we'd have starving Americans. Yeah, oh, listen, it, it's, 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 it's a big number. There's, there's, it's, it's, yeah. I think we're all going to basically find out quite a bit uh, about many different things, particularly, you know, about what is, what is the value of a food chain, any type of chain, actually, right? Do you know what I'm saying? Right. In, in general, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, the, do the dollar is, is a big one, man. I mean, there's, uh, sure. I, I think folks that even, well, I, it's hard to comprehend, actually, you know, as to... Mm -hmm. how you can actually push that much money out and the dollar is still holding, but I can understand it because mm -hmm. even though Europe can't get it together yet, these these first world companies are going to have to push money out so the whole thing doesn't collapse, right? Because then they're not going right. to collect anything, right? Yeah. Correct. And we will have a retraction in the dollar. We don't want to have the dollar as strong as it is right now. This is a short-term thing that's good for the world, good for the U.S., but we need to have the dollar retract over the next, like, six months to a year. This is not a sustainable thing for the dollar. It's not good for us. No. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, gold's hanging at the 1700. The equities, right. however, the equities, man, are leading that gold market, man. These, these equities off the lows, they're up, a lot of them are up 100% already. You know, you got right. Franco Nevada, which is one of the biggest streamers, that's at all time highs, man. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that market is saying that, you know, this dollar is going to weaken down a bit. Either that or the market right. is saying that they're, they're going to stay into the dollar and they're going to pile more into gold. And gold is such right. a small sector, basically, that it, 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 you know, it has a big effect, you know what I mean? So. And there's more room to the upside with gold than there is with the dollar. Yes. You know, I yeah. mean, when you look at the index, like people who don't aren't familiar with the dollar index or what, how that gauges the value of the dollar, don't realize how expensive the dollar is right now. Right. I don't know. I'll tell you, if, if we so. went on vacation, we'd realize how powerful it is, wouldn't we? Go, yeah. You go to Mexico, go to Brazil, and you'd be a multi-billionaire, man. Yeah, right. Teddy, you Hopefully have a we great... have some signals for you next week. Tell you have a great week, safe week. We look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Thanks. You have a good one, guys. You too. Stay right there. Tommy and I come right back, folks.